Major breaking news, we have a powerful legal brief in support of the Second Amendment filed by the plaintiffs in the Laura case that's before the United States Supreme Court. Now, the Laura case arose from the United States Court of Appeals decision in the Third Circuit. We have to discuss whether or not this case dealing with 18, 19, and 20-year-olds and whether or not they have the right to keep in their arms like other American adults or not. What's going to happen? Where does this case stand? And what's happening before the United States Supreme Court in the Laura case out of the Third Circuit? Let's talk about it when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of the brand new best-selling book, Israel Disarmed, What the 10-7 Attacks on Israel by Hamas Teach Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. We must always learn from the mistakes of others. It's a terrible tragedy that Hamas murdered those six individuals, those six hostages. But again, why is it the case that there was hundreds of hostages taken in Israel and 1,200 people murdered on October 7, 2023, a big part of of it, in my view, as I explained in Israel Disarmed, is that Israel got away from a private self-defense oriented gun culture and relied too much on government and government law enforcement to protect them. And that was a mistake. They never should have forgotten the lessons of 1948 and earlier, but they did. And I explain all of that in the book, Israel Disarmed. We must learn these lessons so we don't make the same mistakes here in the United States. All right. So we have breaking news here in the United States Supreme Court. There is a case where the state of Pennsylvania and the anti-gunners are trying to get the U.S. Supreme Court to hear a case called Laura versus Pennsylvania. Laura is spelled L-A-R-A, by the way. This is a case involving whether or not 18, 19, and 20-year-old Americans have a right to keep and bear arms. Specifically, do they have the right to, ca to conceal carry, to carry guns in public? Now, this case arises from a very interesting quirk of Pennsylvania law, we won't need to dwell on it because it's not that relevant for the constitutional question, about whether or not 18, 19, and 20-year-olds can be denied the right to carry in the event of a declared emergency. And I'm happy to report that the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit, which is the Court of Appeals that covers Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, found that 18, 19, and 20-year-olds do in fact have full-blown Second Amendment rights because they are part of the people, as in the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Clearly, that includes 18, 19, and 20-year-olds. There's a whole list of reasons for that, not least of which is that 18, 19, and 20-year-olds are by constitutional amendment have a right to vote because they're full-blown citizens. They have the full-blown right to enter into contracts, get married, uh, uh, have abortions, have gender-affirming uh, surgeries, and have any and all rights associated with being an American citizen. Uh, keep in mind, however, that the anti-gunners are trying to argue that 18, 19, and 20-year-olds have no right to keep and bear arms, even though they're given all these other rights, such as the right to drive, for example. Well, nevertheless, the Third Circuit Court of Appeals said that based on 1791 history and the Militia Act of 1792, it was crystal clear that our founding fathers who wrote the Constitution thought that 18 and 19 and 20-year-olds uh, had full-blown Second Amendment rights. There's no evidence of restrictions on that age group at the time of our founding. Thus, there's no historical tradition of firearms regulation dealing with them. And the Third Circuit said that 18, 19, and 20-year-old adults in America have full-blown Second Amendment rights. The anti-gunners in the state of Pennsylvania are seeking cert, and there's been a major brief filed by the pro Second Amendment plaintiffs asking the Supreme Court to deny cert. This would be very good for the Second Amendment movement for several reasons. First of all, if the Supreme Court denies cert in this case, it allows the Third Circuit Court of Appeals decision that 18, 19, and 20 year olds have full blown Second Amendment rights to stand. Basically, they're not going to interrupt. And you know my rule, the trend, when the trend is your friend, don't interrupt the trend. Right now in the Third Circuit, we have won that case. Why do you want to disrupt that trend um, and potentially get that reversed. So the argument against granting cert by the Second Amendment plaintiffs is uh, no need to, right? They got to the right decision, so there's there, therefore there's no mistake for the U.S. Supreme Court to fix. That's the first thing. The second thing that the pro-Second Amendment plaintiffs argument as to why the Supreme Court should not grant cert here is that there's no circuit split. Specifically, the two courts of appeals that have basically decided questions of 18, 19, and 20-year-olds uh, having the right to keep and bear guns after uh, Bruin. You have the Worth case out of the United States Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit involving the Minnesota law. This is 18, 19, 20 years have full-blown Second Amendment rights. Now you have the Laura case out of the Third Circuit. And basically, there's five district court cases that have addressed this issue in the last several years. And it's four to one in favor of the Second Amendment. So although this is an important issue, it's pretty clear that the Second Amendment movement is winning these cases all around the country. So there is no circuit split right now. And therefore, the court does not need to intervene at this point. The second thing 
opinion, this is very important. And this is a strategic decision. So there's two reasons why I think we're better off if the Supreme Court denies cert to the lower case. First of all, I think it would be better if the Supreme Court grants cert in the Reese versus United States case, which is coming out of the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit. Now, that case is being argued again sometime in the month of September, but this is the case we're almost certainly going to win. I believe the Fifth Circuit will say that 18, 19, and 20-year-olds have full-blown Second Amendment rights. And the benefit to the Reese case is that is technically a legal challenge to a federal, hear what I just said, a federal gun control law that says that 18, 19, and 20-year-olds are not allowed to acquire handguns from FFLs, Federal Firearms uh, Licensees, right? So the reason why this is important is for two reasons. One is it's always nice to knock out a federal gun control law because it's nationwide. The second thing, of course, is it avoids an intramural fight between Justice Clarence Thomas on the one hand and other members of the Supreme Court about the proper way to incorporate the Bill of Rights and fundamental constitutional rights against the states and local governments. For the last 50 years or so, though the Bill of Rights has been incorporated and applied to the states through what's known as the Doctrine of Substantive Due Process, which is the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. Clarence Thomas is of the view that the proper way to incorporate the Bill of Rights is through the Privileges and Immunities Clause of the 14th Amendment. Now, I'm not going to get into the detailed debate here. It's not necessary for you to understand that beyond the following. We in the Second Amendment movement are much better off focused on 1791 being the time period from which the anti-gun movement has to draw the historical analog laws because there's so few gun control laws in 1791 when the Second Amendment and the Bill of Rights was adopted. When you start moving into the 19th century, 1868, which is when the 14th Amendment, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments are uh, created and ratified uh, by the United States, you're in the late 19th century. There are more gun control laws in the late 19th century that the anti-gun movement can use to argue their historical analog laws to justify modern gun control laws. So we're better off laser focus on 1791, which is clearly the right answer rather than late 19th century. But there is this sort of internal dispute between Justice Clarence Thomas, who wants to bring back the Privileges and Immunities Clause. And I'm not saying he's intellectually wrong on this, by the way, as a theoretical matter, but as a practical matter in the real world today, the reality is that the bulk of the Supreme Court is sort of stuck with and they recognize they're stuck with and they're going to continue to follow the 50 or 60 years of precedence we've been living under that says that the 14th Amendment's uh, due, substantive due process clause, if you will, incorporates the Bill of Rights against the states. And for our purposes in the Second Amendment community, we are better off with that approach because it forces everyone to look in 1791 to look for historical analog gun control laws of which there were very, very few. But if you adopt the Clarence Thomas view, of what does the Privileges and Immunities Clause mean? Well, theoretically, you could be in a situation where you start talking about the late 19th century and there are more gun control laws then, which is bad for us. Again, there's a big, you can dispute all this, but the benefit of the Supreme Court denying cert in this Laura case out of Pennsylvania, but granting cert, granting cert next year, what I think will happen in the Reese case, uh, you dodge that fight because if you're dealing with a federal gun control law, which the Reese case out of the Fifth Circuit deals with, guess what? You don't have to get into a fight or discussion of the meaning of the 14th Amendment because you're not dealing with the doctrine of incorporation anymore because the Second Amendment always applied to the federal government. So you don't have to talk about the 14th Amendment at all when you're dealing with a challenge to a federal gun control law, which is why I prefer the Reese case go to the Supreme Court on 18, 19, and 20 year olds rather than let's say the Laura case dealing with 18, 19, 20 year olds coming out of a state law of Pennsylvania. I'd rather see the federal law challenged in Reese, which I think will occur in 2025, 2026. I would prefer to see that as a strategic matter. Uh, but again, I'm not on the Supreme Court, so they'll do whatever they want. All right, folks. So there you have it again. Bottom line is, uh, you know, the Laura plaintiffs are trying to preserve their lower court victory. Let's hope they do that. Let's hope the Supreme Court denies cert in the Laura case. I think that is uh, better. I also think it's likely to occur because the procedural posture of the Laura case is kind of quirky in terms of dealing with emergency laws as defined uh, by Pennsylvania law. And I think that could also be another curveball that makes it less like the Supreme Court uh, grant cert in the Laura case. And again, my preference is to see the Reese case or another federal gun control challenge be granted cert. But again, only time will tell us to what happens. So there you have it, folks. Hope you learned something here today. Make sure you subscribe uh, to me on X at 4 Boxes Diner and subscribe to this channel. We're trying to go to the channel. And again, we will see you again very, very soon, I hope, here at the 4 Boxes Diner.
order is up. Table 2A.